Hello everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are making an early 1850s corset. Here we are, ready to cut out this 1850s corset. I am using cotton sateen today in kind of a off-white color. It's what's already in the stash, so everything that I have for this project was in the stash. So I don't have to purchase anything. And that was kind of the point of this. I need an 1850s corset pretty quickly. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and cut this out. So this is my normal corset pattern. It's technically a Laughing Moon, um, whatever the shaped one is. They have two corset patterns. One's a gusseted and one's a shaped. I like the shaped ones. They are much easier to put together and I like how they fit. Um, I've also kind of found out I do like shaping in the hips, the bust gussets. Um, but I'm just only putting in gussets and this works just as well. So I use this for my 1870s corset. I am going to change it slightly, only in the sense I just cut down the side. I just needed it a little bit smaller all around. It was slightly too big. Um, it fits really well all the way around. It's just as I've worn the corset, it's gone it kind of gotten a little bit bigger, which is kind of typical is what I find out. Or either that or I'm losing weight. I don't know what's going on. But um, it's getting a little too big, the 1870s corset. And I've only had that a couple weeks, but I've also worn it a lot. So it could just be um, as I'm wearing it, it gets more comfortable and I just need different shaping. So I went ahead and shaved about an eighth of an inch off each side of the pieces. So I'm going to have like a two inch extra gap. But yeah, here is the cutting. I did put them on the grain differently, which typically you don't want to do. But I'm dealing with stash you know, stuff and this is what we're going to do. So this is actually left over from the 1830s working corset that we made, um, which I'm not even sure if that video aired yet. It may not have. I think it did. If it did, I'll link it above. And we're going to make a double layer corset today. So I am cutting four layers of everything. Two for the back and, or two for the right side and two for the left side. And it's all going to be on the same fabric. Sharpen some scissors, so this is working a lot better. All right, we're going to sew using the modern machine today because um, I feel like it. And so, I'm going to put her in. It's a lot faster than the hand crank machine. have those sewn together. I'm going to sew the fronts and the backs together. It's the left and the right sides together on both the lining and the fashion fabric. Right, and now I have the lining and fashion fabric pinned and we're going to sew up both backs. and boning channels so I'm going to sew down the center of each seam and then um, a boning width to the right and to the left on each seam so we'll have two bones in each seam. Alright grommets. So um, we are using bone ones, McKinsey Schultz has been reproducing them so we actually have bone eyelets now which is awesome uh, these are almost obsolete by the 50s but not quite and I'm going to be using this corset for like late 40s and early 50s so these are perfectly appropriate and yeah we're gonna put them in they are a little bit difficult to put in which is a good thing because you don't actually do any type of hammering them in or anything so the harder they are to get in, the harder they'll be to get out. So I found what kind of works is my all 
medium sized knitting needle and a giant knitting needle. Sometimes you gotta really go at the giant one to get that way. And this way. Really make sure that that hole is nice and big. Find a grommet and stick it in the hole. And there's a little ring on the grommet, so we're just trying to get the first ring through the hole. And sometimes you gotta go back and redo the whole knitting needle situation again, which I'm gonna have to do. Eventually, you'll be able to pull it enough, sort of, still working on this one. Sometimes I'll poke them with an awl and just kind of vaguely push them over. And sometimes let's grab a whole new grommet. Let's try that. Oops. Well, I'll have to get that one later. Sometimes, just a fraction of a millimeter smaller of a grommet, They'll pop right in. So yeah, they're difficult, but they are easier than hand done eyelets. So if you're doing really early stuff and you don't feel like doing them by hand, these are a good option. Almost there. All right few more threads okay and then I like to give it a good twist just to kind of make sure everything's all good and we got an eyelet and yeah that took a while but it's okay some of them are just a hair bigger than others and so the hair bigger ones are hard to get in put some boning in have one side put in so we're just going to go into the other half I'm going to put a wood busk up the center as well. So everything else is going to be German plastic whalebone. And if you make horses that haven't seen this stuff, this is awesome, awesome stuff. It is plastic, but it does nearly perfectly mimic baleen in a lot of ways. And it makes a super and it makes a super comfortable corset. Alright, putting on the binding which I am doing by machine. The nice thing about German plastic whalebone is that you can sew over it very easily. All right, here you are, all done up. Hair in, trying a new hairstyle. Of course, it's here in my shoes and drawers. Let's go ahead and put this on. Try to figure out which way is the back, which way is the front. This is the front. Okay. One thing about using the same fabric as the lining and as the other fabric. So let me untangle these laces we're going to use. Start and then I need to find some uh, needles. Okay. <laughs> there. It's on at least. Can I move everything around? Alright. Gotta find where my little things went to. Give me a second. Can I find my mirror? Alright, we're good now. Try to go find the little strings I needed to pull. And there we are. I think that turned out rather cute. Uh, the back isn't quite tight. You can see it's kind of loose around my hip. So I wasn't able to get those strings through the last ones because I needed to turn it you know, all the way around. So I needed extra space there. So I think I need slightly longer laces. Other than that, it fits really well. And I am quite happy with it. I mean, I can still move in it. The front busk isn't nearly as confining as I thought it would be. Um, in this type of corset because I'm used to having you know, some movement here 
and in various corsets I really don't, but this isn't so bad, honestly. So yeah, I think this probably needs to be just a little bit more, but yeah, that works. Yeah. And it's super cute. I am glad we went with like a neutral color. I think that's, uh, you see that far more in originals. And um, yeah, it's really cute. So slightly longer laces, but then I think we'll be okay from there. So yeah, um, this one has not, this one for some reason is not having, well, I say for some reason. So I also made an 1860s corset at the same time I made this corset, which you're going to need to see next month because I didn't want two video corset videos back to back. So I kind of separated them. And I did the same thing, like this one doesn't have metal boning in it. And the corset, the 1860s one doesn't either. The 1860s corset was bunching about the back with the, um, I don't know, the uh, German plastic whalebone. So usually I do put, in this very, this very last one, I usually put a metal bit of boning. I didn't do that this time, but for some reason it's being weird. So. Um, this one looks fine, that one doesn't, and I don't know why, because they made it at the exact same time with the exact same pattern, and I did the exact same thing, but okay, maybe it's just the way it fits, maybe it's the um, bone eyelets, I don't know, <laughs> but I think I am going to add metal boning to the other one, because I think that just needs to be done, so, alright, this one turned out super, super cute, um, yeah, I mean, I definitely like there's a little bit more of a gap because I did find out with the other one that it after a couple wears it kind of stretched a little bit so I'm hoping I mean it's not too bad of a gap right now that's what three inches four inches that's not a bad gap and it's not where it's sitting it's not uncomfortable so I think we're good so yay I just need slightly longer laces I can get like really good uh, control over you know my hips but honestly, I really don't need control over my hips because nothing below here matters in the 50s. But yeah, I'm really glad to have kind of a transitional corset. So I have like the 30s one, most of them. And then I have like the 60s and 70s ones. And this is kind of like a transitional period where we see the stylistic ones. So we see the stylistic views of the 60s with the shaping, but then like the you know, non, the non front opening basque. So it's kind of just nice to have something like in between for like 40s and very early 50s. So I'm probably going to start doing like 50, 51. And I think this is a really good option for that. So that's the reason I need to make this today. But it turned out really cute. It is not uncomfortable at all. I mean, I just put this on and as I kind of move around in it, I can see it's getting a little bit looser. Like the laces are kind of pulling themselves um, and, you know, evening themselves out really. And so once that happens, I can probably tighten it a little bit more, but I don't really need to. It's really comfortable the way it is. And yeah, so this was a very nice project to get done. I'm very excited to have it done. I definitely uh, was on my to-do list. It's something I wanted to get done pretty quickly. It took me an evening to make both corsets. Like just an evening. I started afternoon, evening. No, no, I spent most of the afternoon cleaning the sewing room. So yeah, it was like an evening. It was an evening to make two corsets, and that was it. It doesn't take very long. I already had the pattern done. The pattern was good. All I had to do was cut it out and sew it together. Corsets are not hard. They're not time-consuming. The hard part is the fitting. And once you have a corset that fits, everything else is just easy. So yeah, I am very, very thrilled with how this one turned out. I'm excited to kind of get to work with it. I need to go back over my early 50s dresses and make sure it still fits with the new corset. Uh, I may have to take out a waist a little bit because this one may have a slightly large, this one may have a slightly larger waist than what I'm used to, but um, I don't think it, it they'll all fit. It may just need to be you know reposition. I just may need to reposition a dart or two, which is not a big deal. So I'm gonna look into that. We're gonna start making some early 50s dresses because I really have a few that would work, but they're all silk and. Okay, me and silk. I love silk, and I wear, I'm wearing these early 50s dresses. I can certainly wear silk. But if I'm going out there in like July and August, I don't want to wear silk. I'd rather have something cooler. And so we're going to start working a little bit more on that. And yeah, so having a lot of fun with that. So that should be something to look forward to. Uh, slightly different time period, but um, kind of.
kind of well within the range of what I know, so that's kind of fun. I don't learn anything new. It's just kind of applying a, it's a transitional time. So I'm used to 40s. I've done a few 40s. Really used to 30s at this point. I know my 60s and my late 50s. It's kind of going backwards just a little bit. Kind of in that middle ground. I've not really yet explored, but I kind of know what's going on because I know earlier and I know later. It's just kind of meshing the two, which will be really fun um, exploration opportunities. So, yeah, this was a really nice little project. Super quick, super easy. And I have a working course in now, so that is always a good thing to, to um, end up with. I was concerned about the bone eyelets pulling themselves out because I do kind of lace myself a little tighter in my 50s and 60s corsets because I like I like the constrict I like the constricted feeling. I don't like it feeling like it's loose and like it's going to move on me. I prefer them tight, but not like tight lace like I'm really lacing down and hurting myself. Just I like them snug. Snug. That's a good word. Um, so, and on the tighter side of snug. And I was concerned about the bone eyelets since they're really not hammered in, that they maybe not, wouldn't hold up as well, but these are holding up really well. I wasn't, I didn't have any issues with them, none of them pulled out. They look like they're going to work really well. So, yeah. I highly recommend them. They are a pain and a half to get them in. But once you get them in, they seem like they're going to work really well. So, really excited to kind of get to work with them a little bit more. Uh, I still have about 12 or 14 left, and so, I don't know, I may have to start doing something for the 20s, because I'm sitting here going, I need like 14 to do a whole course, but maybe we did something like short? I don't know, we'll figure that out. But yes, thank you so much for joining me today as we made an early 1850s corset um, with our little bone eyelets. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. As always, have a fantastic week, and I will see you back here on Monday.